Hey you, do you know how banks traditionally make money? Right, lending money and taking interest, right? You're right, but that's not really the catch. So how do banks make money? And why is that relevant for you? Let's find out. I'm new to this whole YouTube thing and I want to improve myself to give you better content. I want to talk with you about economics, its history, its impact and also why it's important for us all and therefore understand the world a little bit better. If you are interested in these topics or you just want to see the channel grow, please do not forget to click subscribe. Also, please let me know in the comments below what I can do better and what topics you are interested in. With this out of the way, let's go back to the video. So, if you are asking a friend to lend you money and he's willing to give you some, what does he do? He opens his wallet and gives you the money. And where's the difference to what banks are doing? Quite simple. They don't give people money, they own themselves. As we put money to our bank account, the bank knows that we usually don't withdraw everything at once. Generally speaking, they know that we all just need about 10% in cash of the money that we actually own. Meaning, if they would just let all the money that you have in your bank account sit there waiting for you to withdraw, they wouldn't earn much. Because others need money, especially in form of credits, it's easy just to give the money that's waiting for their creditors and let them pay interest for the money they are lending. The money that you are saving is generating future income for the banks. This is called money creation. The money that just exists in the books is called demand deposit. Therefore, the money that exists in demand deposits is way higher, around the tenfold, than actually the amount that is printed and minted as money. What do you think is the problem with money creation? Of course, either failing of paying the debts or people needing too much cash at once. Especially when a high number of credits are failing the regulator can force the bank to liquidate, which would mean the customers are losing their money in the end. In this case, that's why customers are trying to either transfer the money to other accounts or withdrawing the money directly. That's what we call a bank run. Resulting in a spiral which intensifies the financial crisis and the worst case even leading into a collapse of the financial system. So what are the options to limit the risk of this happening? The amount of created money is limited by the demand for it. Meaning the higher the interest on credits, the lower the demand for credits. Furthermore, the banks have to hold their accounts at the central bank. On the one hand, the central bank usually asks the banks to have a reserve requirement for the demand deposits. On the other hand, banks have to calculate a credit risk. The higher the credit risk, the higher the reserves have to be for each credit to cover for losses. Last but not least, the central bank is controlling the base money by the interest rates that the banks have to pay for their credits at the central bank. The higher the prices for the banks, the higher the prices of the credit for the consumer and this is regulating the demand and supply. This policy allows for bringing money into the economic system or removing it, having an influence on the inflation rate. If you want to learn more about inflation, you can check my video about inflation. Another problem is, in the end, the banks still need to approve credits, meaning the fiscal policy could always influence economic policy in the public, but also in the private sector. 
If banks, for example, do not approve for credits in a certain sector or a region, these regions or sectors will be hindered in their economic growth. Meaning with granting credits, the banks have quite a lot of power as long as the system is not fully automated as like it is in the US nowadays. In the US nowadays you just have a credit score and from that it has an automatic calculation of your actual interests. But still, there are so many countries where the bankers still have to decide on giving out loans or not. And with that, they are the most important point if a project will be supported or not. What do you think? Do you think that banks have too much power with money creation and should it be limited by a law or anything? Or do you think that banks should do whatever they want and are free as this is a free market and it's their risk if they're giving out loans? Let's discuss in the comments below. And do not forget to click on subscribe and watch my other videos. And I'll see you in the next one.